What are some of the hurdles we all need to overcome? I'm talking about organizational, cultural, leadership, and measurement to better market our practices and brands in today's world. What are the two most important phases of consumer behavior shifts that we need to pay attention to brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic? What's the meaning of meaning of new marketing and marketing rebellion? And why do consumers want brands that represent values? Well, during tonight's show, Mark Schaefer, my guest, is going to answer these questions and share his insights to what's happening right now in marketing and branding, especially in a COVID-19 world. Now, who's Mark Schaefer? He is a globally recognized keynote speaker, educator, business consultant, and author. His blog, Grow, is hailed as one of the top marketing blogs in the world. And he's the author of seven books, including Marketing Rebellion, Known, and The Content Code, to mention just a few. Recently came out with a new free ebook, The Pandemic Business Strategy Playbook, Actionable Ideas in a World of Uncertainty. And you can connect with Mark over at businessgrow.com. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome Mark Schaefer to the show. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Hey, Mitch, it's great to see you. Well, it's good to see you too. And it's fun chatting with you before we went live. I want to encourage everyone to join us on all the different platforms, submit your questions. Uh, We are monitoring them and we will be getting your questions over to Mark. Before we dive in, I just want to thank you publicly for the beautiful watercolor that you were kind enough to send over to me. Uh, not too long ago. And for those of you that watch my runs down at uh, Strands Beach in Dana Point, California, Mark saw this picture that I shared and turned it into a beautiful watercolor. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. Well, you're welcome. Th- those were still my early days, but it it, it it holds up pretty well. Looks pretty good. It looks very good. And it sits right across from my desk. So I think about you on a daily basis. Mark. Oh, thank you, Mitch. Uh, It's my pleasure. Listen, we have got a lot to talk about. We're all going through a lot of change, both personally and professionally, a lot of challenges. I've always, uh, and I'm telling my clients, let's be proactive, right? Let's be proactive and make smart decisions moving forward. But you're talking from the perspective of someone that's been there and done that. You had to do battle with COVID-19. Tell us a little bit about that before we dive into the show today, if you don't mind. Yeah, well, it's not very often I uh, you know, start an interview talking about my illness, but <laughs> I asked your permission to do is, so, so. That is relevant. It is certainly yeah. relevant. I don't mind talking about it at all. Um, well, you know, uh, my wife uh, got sick on a, she was on a ski trip in Idaho and came home uh, sick. Uh, the, she went to see a doctor. The doctor said, oh, you just, you know, have a touch of the flu. But after she had a fever for five days in a row, we said, we better, you know, you better get tested. So she tested positive, uh, was sick for about two and a half weeks. And miraculously, I didn't start showing symptoms until she was better. So that was really quite amazing because I was in this highly contagious environment for so long. My sickness lasted about uh, three weeks neither one of us had to go to the hospital. So that was, that was great. That was kind of the goal. Um, you know, I was, I was pretty sick. I, I had a lot of, uh, you know, coughing. I had uh, a fever for 15 straight days. Sometimes I, you know, I had a fever and I was shaking with chills. I was wearing like a winter coat and gloves. You know, I was shaking so much, uh, stomach problems, headaches. It just threw something different at you every day trying to, you know, find some weakness. You know, the the, the two symptoms that were kind of the most concerning were I had this pressure in my chest, which was really unnerving. And that got pretty bad for a while. And I had this hypoxia where I wasn't getting enough oxygen to my brain. And so I went for a period of a couple of weeks where I really couldn't concentrate, couldn't read, couldn't write. And it was because I was sort of like standing at the top of Mount Everest, sort of disoriented, not getting enough oxygen. So thankfully, all that went away. I'm back to work. And I played tennis today in the sunshine. Oh, did you? So it's all, it's all good. 
Well, that, that's good to hear. And the reason I wanted to bring it up, and I asked your permission before we went live to talk about this, is that you're somebody that uh, not only had to deal with COVID-19, but just like the rest of us, this this pandemic's affected all of our businesses. Oh, it's, sure. it's affected our marketing and branding strategies. And that's sure. what we're going to focus on tonight, you guys, is the business side to all of this. And I want to just say hi to everyone joining us. Please share this out. I will get to your questions and share your questions with Mark. <laughs> but let's talk a little bit about uh, the marketing rebellion, you know, it is your, your book that you came out with in 2019, your latest book, other than the free ebook on the pandemic. Um, what do we need to know about the marketing rebel rebellion, uh, based upon what's happened the last two months and moving forward? Well, it's a, it's a fascinating question really, Mitch. Um, because a number of people have written me since this pandemic started and said, Oh my gosh, your book was was prescient. It, it it predicted really what was going to happen. And I think if we look at a lot of our businesses and what's going on with consumers right now, it's speeding up the inevitable, right? I mean, the, the virus is really making changes in the world that probably needed to be changed anyway. And, and some people are saying it's like it's blasting us like 10 years into the future. In a lot of ways, you know, how we work, how we connect, how we buy, the future of retail and so forth, right? And I think um, the same certainly uh, was true for me. Now, one of the things I talk about in my book, and it's so fascinating to see this happening. You know, I have to admit, you know, I, maybe this sounds weird, but, you know, look, this is a terrible, terrible, terrible time. You know, I've suffered in you know during this period. My business has suffered, but from an academic standpoint, it's absolutely fascinating to really see how things are evolving. And here's what we're seeing, Mitch. The subtitle of my book, Marketing Rebellion, is "The Most Human Company Wins," and that's exactly what's happening. It's exactly what's happening. And if companies aren't connecting today, in really an authentic, genuine, compassionate way, they're becoming a joke, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and the biggest companies are struggling with this because they're locked into their systems and their advertising agency relationships, you know, and they've become memes, right? Oh, we're with you, you know, we've been with you for 25 years and we're here to help. Well, how, how, show me. Yeah. Do something. The companies who are getting down in the trenches, rolling up their sleeves and getting to work to really help people, those are the companies who are building a brand. They're becoming legendary, right? Because they're showing the human side. And we're hearing so many amazing stories of companies that are donating food and donating equipment and they're giving you know millions of dollars to you know, keep their... Um, keep their employees employed. You know, there we've got companies here who are donating food to feed uh, medical workers. You know, the heroes in the field, and so uh, we're seeing it come alive. We are absolutely seeing it come true, Mitch. I believe this with all of my heart and every fiber in my body that this is what we want as consumers and as human beings. We want to connect in a real human way and the most human company will win. And that's what's happening right before our eyes. It's interesting because, you know, I read your book. I, I read the book once and then I listened to it again during my runs. And, you know, I like to run and you guys know me. I'm not going to do that unless I thought the content was really, really good. And it is. But my takeaway was what you just said, what you were talking about in your book. We're watching play out in real time. 24 7 for the good for good or for bad right mm -hmm. and it's it's interesting because originally automobile manufacturers were coming out with commercials and i thought during week number one they were spot on i mean they were addressing this issue we care but after week number two or week number three i wasn't hearing them making any suggestions or doing anything about yeah. it and it was yeah. getting old and I yeah. felt like I was getting played. I was just another consumer, except as a consumer in today's world, my expectation's different. 
my expectation yeah. as a consumer over the last two months is different than what it was Absolutely. six months ago. Absolutely. Uh, That's so, a very key point, by the way. Talk, let's that, talk about a little bit. Yeah, you know, it's a very it's a it's it's probably the most important point that we'll talk about tonight is that you know what's happening now, how the world is changing, how consumers are changing their habits in a very permanent way. One of my marketing heroes is a guy named Martin Lindstrom. He wrote a wonderful book called Small Data. I understand he's got a new book coming out next year, so I can't wait to see that. You know, and I follow Martin, and one of the things he's projected, here's a guy who is, you know, I mean, he is one of the most brilliant uh, futurists around. He said, we're conditioning an entire generation basically to have post-traumatic stress syndrome. He said, mm. "Our the fear part of our brain is so overworked and so overwhelmed for so many weeks, it's going to be a permanent shift. People are being rewired. They're not just creating new habits. And this is why this is so important, Mitch. It's so important for us to talk about this because what we need to do right now, we have to assume we don't really know our customers right now. That's how much it's changing. We need to get out there. We need to listen. We need to reconnect. Martin gave this example. He was doing research in the food industry to see how food preferences had changed during this period. So he had this research. So he had this meeting with all these CMOs from all these big food companies. He said, okay, can you tell me the 10 biggest food trends right now? Most of the CMOs could only get one out of 10. These are the most experienced people in the whole industry. That's how much it's changed. Some of it will go back, but a lot of it isn't. And so, you know, we, we can't assume that we know. We can't assume that we're in touch. And, and, we, and, and customers right now, I use this model. Uh, I, I talk about how we're in the bottom of Maslow's hierarchy of needs back from our psych, psych 101 days, right? So at the mm -hmm. bottom of the human needs, you need air. You have to have, you need safety and shelter and food. You don't want to be sick, right? And that's where a lot of people are living right now. And they, they don't want to be lonely. They don't want to be isolated. At the very top of the pyramid is, should I buy a boat? Or do I need a marketing consultant? That's me, right? So I so if you're if you're marketing, if your business is already down at the bottom of the pyramid, and I know that a lot of the people um, that are listening uh, today, they are down there because they're helping people with safety issues, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're if you're working at the bottom of the pyramid, you're golden. If you're at the top of the pyramid, you've got to find a way to get down where the people are now and apply your skills and apply your talents to be relevant in this moment. So Mark, if we're using social and digital to find that way to connect with our clients, to connect with the consumer, talk to us a little bit about the difference between using bots and automation as opposed to a human to human touch in the process. Well, obviously I think that's that's the goal. That's that's what we want and that's certainly part of what the marketing rebellion is about. You know, I think someone asked me Mitch, you know, what's what's the point of this rebellion? Uh every rebellion has a goal. And I said in my mind I have this image of these of this massive group, this massive march of people and and they're coming to our companies and they're holding up a sign that says respect me, right? stop spamming me, stop right. interrupting me, stop, you know, respect my life and respect my time and respect my privacy, right? Don't use technology to annoy, annoy people and abuse people and hurt people, right? It has to stop. Now, look at what we're doing tonight. We're using technology to lower the barriers of connection, right? You and I, we live a continent apart. 
uh, but we've become friends through social media. We respect each other, and we're having this great conversation, collaborating, creating value together. You can see my face, hear my voice. You can hear what I'm passionate about, right? This is the best use of technology. So I'm not anti-technology. I'm anti-abusing people. And as we talk about moving toward a human-centered marketing approach, the first step is stop doing what people hate. If you're, if you're doing, you know what people hate yeah. because you're a consumer too. So if you're doing stuff in your company that you know people are going to hate, just stop it. There's a better way. There's lots of better ways. There are lots of better ways, and it, and it requires a shift. It requires a change in how we go about doing things and maybe communicating. As a lawyer, 10 years ago, if you were to tell me I'd have a live video show or a podcast, maybe mm -hmm. 15 years ago, I would say, what's that? What are you talking about? What has that got to do with me being in the courtroom, right? Tonight, I'm here talking with you based upon a prior relationship, based upon an ongoing level of communication, and shifting how I practice law and build my brand to hopefully add value to the consumer, hopefully open up another door to allow people access to a lawyer that they didn't have in the past. And, and like you said, the difference between this, making it available to somebody as opposed to pushing a message in an email five mm -hmm. times a day or, mm -hmm. you know, there's nothing I dislike more than getting text messages from marketers. Oh yeah. This is this is the one place where, you know, if I get something on here, it's usually personal, it's usually family, it's usually a client. Mm -hmm. Um, but it requires a shift in how we do business. And for the lawyers, the doctors, the CPAs out there that are trying to figure out what's that shift? How can we how can we embrace that and be proactive and move forward? Maybe a couple of suggestions or a couple of ideas or a couple of examples yeah. from marketing rebellion. Well, I think the most powerful idea and uh, really sort of the core idea uh, behind the book is marketing rebellion. I wrote this, it's a wake up call and it's, you know, it's not my views of the world saying Mark Schaefer says, you know, this is different now. Right. So this is research. For, I, I mean, it's millions of dollars of research from Accenture, from Deloitte, from McKinsey, and I use this research to paint this picture, and, it, and it's sort of shocking of where consumers really are today, right? So we've been kind of you know doing our marketing. We do a little bit better every year, a little bit better on our Facebook ads, a little bit better on our SEO. Meanwhile, the customers have moved all the way over here. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and, and the most powerful, I think, statistic or, or idea in the book is that two thirds of our marketing today is occurring without us, right? The customer is the marketer. They're going to connect, especially when it comes to legal services, personal services, right? They're going to come, they're going to connect through a relationship, right? Through some emotional tie, you know, to you as a person, they're not going to buy, you know, use services because of your logo, because of your slogan, because of the colors on your website. It's kind of what you're doing tonight. It's showing mm -hmm. your face and your heart and your passion and your intelligence, right? We have to be, this. The, the two thirds of our marketing is occurring without us. We can't buy our way in. People don't see ads anymore. If they see them, they don't believe them. We have to be invited into those conversations, which means we have to earn our way into the conversations where the, you know, the customers are carrying our story forward. I love it, that. It really, truly is a change in mindset, you know, as, as I was writing this book, there's literally a moment where I thought, I don't know what it means to be a marketer today. I mean, it's so different from what I grew up with. I was going to say, that's what you do. That's your expertise. Well, it is now. <laughs> it better be because we don't have a choice. We, yeah. don't, we, don't. Yeah. we don't have a choice. Well, look, here's the thing. Um, for those of you, I, I remember reading uh, is it The Content Code yeah. uh, and yeah. Known, both of your books, yes. uh, both while traveling. And it just opened my, my, my eyes up to creating content, to adding value, to doing things that other lawyers weren't doing. Now, tonight, I'm hearing you, an experienced marketer who knows a thousand times more than I'll ever know or want to know about marketing, 
kind of taking a step back and saying, listen, we need to reevaluate how we're going about these things. And you mentioned the term human-centered marketing. Yeah. Um, what is that? What do you mean by that? Well, I think it's, you know, as I said, the, the first step mm -hmm. is, is to stop doing what people, what people hate, right? The problem in marketing today is we've, we've become too obsessed with technology. We hide behind dashboards. We expect to have all the answers on social media. And, um, you know, that just, those old ways just don't, they don't work anymore, right? And mm -hmm. so we have to have a, a, a human facing sort of presence, right? We have to show our hearts and show our minds, show our talents, because today, increasingly, the personal brand is the brand, right? Now, you know, I don't know if you have evidence or statistics that, that you share, but if I had to guess, I would say that a very high percentage of your business is is coming because coming to you because somehow people saw something that you did some content that you created maybe it's something maybe it's a video on your site where they've seen you right they've heard you doesn't matter what the name of your firm is doesn't matter how beautiful your offices are they want to see you that mm -hmm. is the brand right yeah. the most human company wins if you're the most human lawyer in your niche, you're going to win because that's what people want. Warts all and all. Warts and all, right? I mean, yeah. somebody watches me on live video and they listen to how I put a sentence together or the mistakes that I Not make. Really big warts, but some warts. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what if makes it. I'm the first to admit it, Mark. Do us all a favor. If you're a jerk, stay away. Don't do this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're a jerk, we need to work. That'll, we'll save that for another show. Yeah. Right. But, you know, I would How say most strategy. Don't be a jerk. <laughs> yeah. Don't be a jerk, which is which is rule number one. I think a lot of new business with our firm are personal uh, referrals from past clients, from local sure. judges, local you know claims adjusters, people that have done business with us. But that goes to other people referring clients or customers to somebody's business. It's the human to human aspect right. of building a company. And I know, I know, you know, you've written about that. That was that was something you you really focused on in marketing rebellion. Talk to us a little bit about the customer being the new world marketer, especially in today's world, and maybe a little bit about um, user generated content as it relates to all of that. Well, you know, the research shows. Uh, I mean, there's a familiar bit of research from. Edelman called the trust barometer. They've done this research for I think 11 or 12 years now. And they um, they show how people trust companies and brands all around the world. And what this has shown is that for 11 consecutive years, trust in businesses, brands, and advertising has plummeted. But who do people trust? They trust business owners, business founders, entrepreneurs, technical experts, right? right? They trust each other. They trust their, their neighbors and their friends. That's who they believe, right? The customer is the marketer. Uh, you know, I connect to, to, to you know, businesses in my community because I want to support the people. The people are nice. The people are worthy. The people are involved. I see them. It's not just saying, you know, we're great and we'll get through this together. We're with you. I'm seeing them out there creating groups to make masks, right? I'm going to support those people. Uh, they're down in the streets, uh, you know, helping people, feeding people, deliver. You know, I've got a group of friends delivering food to elderly people who can't get out to the stores right now, right? That's, that's legendary. That creates legend. That's going to create loyalty that transcends this pandemic and transcends, you know, generations. You talked about customers being the new marketers and yeah. user-generated content. Every oh, yeah, is, that was is, the second part of your question. But it's, but it's one of my favorite things to see happen. Yeah, it's almost it. everything today. It really is. So, you know, what we're talking about is how do we create something so authentic 
and believable, something so interesting about our business and something so relevant. So AIR, air, authentic, interesting, relevant. That's what makes a story carry forward. That's something people will talk at a talk about at a dinner party. You would not believe what I heard. Did you know that, you know, uh, Mitch, this lawyer, he did this and, you know, he's working in the community. And did you know he's, you know, he's doing this, this live streaming video and he's well known all around the world. And so AIR. So what is it about you that is worth sharing? You've got to figure that out. And then you've got to think about where do your customers gather naturally in the, in the book, I call it the islands. Customers today can self-select into islands. You know, there's online groups for everything today, right? Uh, offline groups, you know, neighborhood groups. And the the real trick, the real value is if we can get people to share our story, that's user-generated content, right? Let me just tell you a quick little fun story. It's one of my favorites. It has Please nothing do. to do with the legal services, but it demonstrates what I mean. So I went into this barbecue restaurant in Virginia and right in the middle of this restaurant is this giant fiberglass pig with a tie-dye t-shirt. This thing's like 12 feet tall. It's taken up quite a bit of space in this little restaurant. So I said to the owner, what's the story behind the pig? He said, that is my entire marketing plan. Now, what does he mean by that? Now, he still has to deliver the goods, right? He has to have good parking, good service, clean restrooms, delicious food, good value. But if you do all that, they're going to want to take a picture of themselves with the pig and they're going to put it on Snapchat and Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and everywhere else. And it's, and, and that visual user generated content telling that little story of the tie dyed pig is going to remind people to go to that restaurant. It's it's organic advocacy, right? It's better than any ad we could ever take out. When someone else said, I had a great time at this restaurant. The food was delicious. And here I am with the pig, which is like the name of the restaurant, tie-dyed pig. So that is user-generated content at its best, right? I think he paid $1,200 for a fiberglass pig, he'll never have to spend another dive on marketing again. It's I just love hearing those stories. Uh, Tyler That's Anderson, Tyler, Tyler Anderson, CEO of Casual Fridays, who puts on Social Media Day San Diego that I've spoken at the last couple of years, uh, gave a presentation last year, Mark, in 2019, last year, on user-generated content, content and talked about a car wash in San Diego where it's like the Soapy Suds car wash where people, as they're driving through, uh, lip sync a song as we're driving through and post it oh, with a hashtag. Right. It's great because you're sitting in the car anyway. They've got a captive yep. audience sure. and they give away, you know, free car washes for a month or whatever it might be. It's amazing to see what people do while they're in that, how they get into costume and how they put on wigs and how they help promote that car wash mm -hmm. for the car wash. And I'd like everyone watching tonight or watching the recorded show, think mm -hmm. about how you can create interesting, unique, entertaining content that your users, your clients, your patients uh, can share out and brag about and boast about and have fun with. Um, and, it does, and I want to emphasize, you know, it, it doesn't have to be silly, you know? No, no. I mean, I, I, I put out a lot of content and, um, you know, I guess sometimes I'm funny, but I'm, I'm, I'm rarely silly. Um, but, you know, people share my content thousands of times every week. Right. And, and, you know, I've built a very successful uh, business uh, over the last 12 years. I've never take out, taken out one dime in advertising in, in 12 years. We have very similar mindsets, Mark, uh, very similar with our law firm. You're, you look, in, in my book, you are one of the top marketing experts on the planet. I just okay. love your work. I love you. I love what you do in your books and at your blog. And if you don't mind, let's let's pivot just a little bit about when the pandemic hit, you intentionally changed your content and saw something happen. 
Talk to yeah. us a little bit about that because I think everybody watching can do the same thing if they know how to go about doing it. Well, you know, when everything just started to crash and crash fast, I have to admit that I went through a period of disorientation. Um, uh, my uh, consulting was canceled uh, because all of a sudden, within a few days, I became irrelevant. My customer said, oh, Mark, we love you, but we just lost 50% of our business. Our supply chain is collapsing and our people are getting sick. We'll see you in a few months, which is the right decision. Uh, of course, uh, you know, I'm a keynote speaker. I, 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 you know, I was supposed to be in Romania today. <laughs> oh, really? Really? All that got canceled, all that or got, you know, or that moved. Uh, and uh, the thing that was really sort of unsettling is even my college classes got canceled. I teach at, at the, in the graduate studies program at Rutgers University. I've taught there for uh, 12 years and uh, 11 years, maybe 11 years. And I mean, I thought, gosh, whatever happens in this world, we're going to have college classes. And so all of a sudden, boom, I had nothing. And it took me about three days to sort of get my you know legs back under me and realize that what is my core competency? I'm a teacher. I teach in everything I do, whether it's a book, a blog, a speech, or a class, I'm a teacher. The world just needs me to teach something different right now. So let's get on with it. So I had lots of great content ready to go in my blog. And I looked at this and I said, this is just irrelevant. The people who read my blog are suffering right now. They're confused. They're disoriented. They're filled with uncertainty and pain. You know, they're, they're confused. And so I got to get down, you know, like we talked at the bottom of the pyramid, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got to, I've got to help them in the moment where they are right now. And so I just completely flipped my blog. And, 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 you know, one of the questions I had, Mitch was, well, whenever, I mean, this has gone on for weeks now, right? I'm, I'm starting to write more about, you know, marketing traditional things. I'm kind of getting back in my, regular groove now. But for weeks and weeks, you know, I wrote about really, you know, psych psychology of disorientation, right? And pain and suffering and choosing to use this time to write your own narrative, right? Because we're living in the middle of history. What's happening now, this is what we're going to tell our children and grandchildren for the end of till the till the till the end of time, right? What's the story we're going to tell? You know, let's let's tell a story of courage and resilience. We can choose to write the story. So this is the stuff I was writing about. And people ask me, well, you know, were you worried about SEO? Were you worried about, you know, creating evergreen content? Because people might look back at this years from now and say, well, what was that all about? But I think this is an example, Mitch, of, look, you've, you, you've got to reorient now. With, with courage and, you, and, and, and you've got to be bold and say, I need to help people where they are right now. We'll worry about the money later. Right now, it's all about helping, giving, being compassionate and, and, and really walking the talk, not just lending a hand, but being the hand, right? You know, another thing I haven't really, you know, talked about, but I, I was doing probably four or five coaching sessions a day with people. And most of the people I talked to were in tears, right? It was very hard. It was very stressful, but I have a background in coaching and counseling, right? Uh, I have a, have a master's degree in coaching and counseling, which I don't use so much on the marketing job, but it's something I can apply now. So when I saw people frantic and hurting, I said, just call me, call me. You've got somebody to talk to, right? And I, I can't tell you how many people I talked to. And it was very stressful. You know, I would go, I, I would leave my office completely wiped out because yeah. I would spend the whole day talking to people who were in tears. But that's how, that's what I had to do. Mark, we, we both kind of approached it from the same perspective. We also just said, listen, if you have a, uh, 
a COVID-19 issue in your business, whatever it might be. And, and the same thing with respect to what's going on now with the protest and First Amendment rights and things like this. Just call us. Just just reach us. DM us. Right. And same thing. At the end of the day, we're exhausted because we're trying to answer so many questions. But it's just the right thing to do. We're seeing uh, not us, but generally speaking, podcast numbers, website view numbers, live video numbers, even this show, they're going down. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And when um, COVID-19 hit, we immediately started creating content about assumption of risk and waiver documents and speaking agreements, things people like you need to start including in your speaking agreements to protect yourself, to protect your team, to protect your financial interests. Those were some of the most heavily viewed and talked about blog posts that I've ever had in my life because it was relevant to what was going on in the world. Uh, same thing with respect to whistleblowing, same thing with respect to uh, the right to free speech and some of the content we're sharing now. You did the same thing. You pivoted and started creating content that people needed to see in order to get answers. Right. right? And um, I, you know, and, and you just explained that, but I just think it's just so important for people well, to and the, and, stop. Yeah, and the thing that happened that was sort of unexpected, totally <laughs> unexpected, is the the traffic on my website doubled. You know, and, and I saw the same thing as you did. I mean, my podcast numbers were down. Everybody was down 40%, 50% because and, and they were overwhelmed and their routines were broken, right? So there was no commute. So you don't listen to podcasts anymore because that's the one I used to listen to, to podcasts. That's I don't read Mark's blog anymore or, or whatever. But right. because I, I and und undoubtedly it was because of the pivot. I mean, some of the, some of the, the articles that I wrote, I wrote an article. It had a really strange um, title uh, early on. It said, uh, the coronavirus, a love letter. I, I and, read that. And, and, and basically what I was trying to do is saying, look, okay. You know, I was mad and upset and disoriented for a few days. And now I'm just embracing the chaos. Bring it on. We're going to get through this and this is how I'm going to use this time. And this is what I'm going to do. And there's no stopping me. And I listed, I, th I think like 25 positive things that I could do. And, and that had a huge impact on people. Yeah. I mean, I got so many comments on that. And, and, and I think it helps people because this uncertainty is just wearing us down. But if we can just focus on one positive thing that we can do today, it's sort of like, makes a lot of this other irrational thought and irrational fear fade away. I think the leadership that you, sh that you showed in that post, I took that post and shared it with my mastermind because I wanted to empower oh. them with, and look at this as a proactive approach and few people write as well as you do. And so I just took your post and said, you guys need to read this. There's a message here, be proactive, be a leader. And for those of you that are professionals, be there for your clients. OK, don't look at them as a source of income. Look at them as an opportunity to help and to assist. One thing you did, Mark, and this is kind of a shift or a hard pivot. But one thing you did is you did write the ebook uh, when all of this went down, the Pandemic Business Strategy Playbook. And mm -hmm. you talked about four strategic ideas that we as business owners and as marketers need to understand and appreciate moving forward in time. Can you go over those four different strategies with us? Yeah, I mean, real real quickly, and I think we, we kind of talked a little bit about this earlier, but, you know, the most important thing we need to do right now is to reassess where are our customers going, where are they now, and where are they going to be? Are they creating new habits that are going to transcend this pandemic? Are they going to be buying in different channels? Are they going to be buying from different people? Have there, are there new competitors that have emerged? Here's a quick example. So when my wife and I were sick with the virus, we couldn't go to the store. We needed food. And so, you know, we were quarantined. And so we subscribed to this thing called HelloFresh. They deliver this box to your door. It has all the ingredients and a recipe, and you can make food at home. And we discovered that we like it because it's teaching us like new things to cook. And so after the pandemic, we decided we're going to, you know, keep subscribing to this 
you know, a couple times a week. Now think about this. We're buying food through a channel we didn't even know existed two, two or three months ago, right? Yeah. So number one, where are your customers? What are their spending habits? How are they buying? And we don't need to get it perfect, but we just have to think, what's the highest probability answer? Don't worry about the worst case. Don't worry about the best case. Just think, what's the highest probability? Get as much information as you can. Number two, now that we know where our customers are, does our business still serve them the same way? Okay. If, you know, in my world, we're moving to online education, right? I have to upgrade my equipment. I have to upgrade. I've got new lights. I've got new cameras. I've got new technology, right? Uh, the, the schools that I'm working with, they have to, you know, change everything. The most important thing now isn't the classroom. It's the IT department, right? So, we've got to make sure that our competencies are aligned to where our, our customers are. Um, number three, how do we demonstrate our value? Is Are the sales and marketing channels the same? The last speech I gave before the, the, the virus hit uh, was a huge conference in Sacramento, California. And they had a trade show and I was talking to the vendors and I asked one of the vendors, I said, how much business do you get from these trade shows? He said, all of it. He said, this is a tradition. I see my customers. You know, we have a, you know, a dinner together. We sign annual contracts. That's, this is where I get all my business. Now, if you're depending on live events and conferences for your sales and marketing, ain't going to happen, right? This may not happen till later next year, maybe even to 2022. So we've got to reevaluate our sales and marketing competencies. Are they still relevant? Do we need a change? And then the last thing really, I think, has to do with expectations. Look, I used to work for a, you know, a Fortune 100 company. It was a public company. We had quarterly sales goals. You know, all that is like just out the door right now. And I think we need to sort of almost like – for the next 18 months at least, kind of reevaluate what does success really look like right now? I think for many of us, for me, for many of my friends, success means getting to the other side. It means arriving, right? You don't have to be remarkable. You don't have to start some new habit. You don't have to get, you know, a, a beach body. You know, you don't have to learn a new language. You just got to get to the other side. That's success right now. Just fight to the other side, but do it with grace. Do it with compassion. Meet customers where they where they are, and that's what's going to create loyalty right now. Hmm. Mark, I just love that. Uh, in the last couple of minutes, do you mind if I just uh, run a couple of questions by you that are coming in? Sure, absolutely. I'd love yeah. to. Just, just different topics, so I don't want to, you know, go too, too shotgun on you. But um, one of the questions has to do with with everyone using live video right now. There are people that had never been on Zoom before that are now accomplished Zoom users over the last couple of months. Understanding the power of video and live video uh, moving forward when it comes to marketing, in the vein that you've been talking about, um, what platforms would you suggest uh, smaller, smaller service-oriented companies? So I guess like lawyers and doctors yeah. uh, to focus on. I think I already know the answer to the question, but just in your mind, based upon what we're experiencing now as consumers, are there any particular platforms that you think we might want to focus on, or does it depend well, on your audience? It's 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 a big question, but let me try yeah. to answer it as 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 yeah. succinctly as I can. Like, Didn't mean to do that to you. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah. Well, number one, pick something that you love. All right. Don't worry what everybody else is doing. Pick one thing. If you want to write, write. If you want to have a podcast, to have a podcast because you got to stick it out. Right. Mitch, you've been doing this show for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's how you build authority. You got to be consistent. You have to stick it out. And you're not going to do that if you're not having fun. So pick the platform where you're going to have fun and try to do it in a way that's a little bit different that will, you know, attract an audience and help you stand out. I love that. 
And uh, you've got obviously a lot of fans who I have been sharing their comments uh, during the conversation. You yeah, know, I see a few of them here. <laughs> you do, and you talk about being consistent. And uh, you know, it's 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 a matter of showing up and giving it your best shot and being prepared, not trying to not you know respecting the time and attention of your audience. I think that that's always applied even before the internet, right, Mark? It's sure. it's here's something that's interesting is for those of us that have been around before the internet as we know it running businesses, what I've noticed is the people skills and the approaches even back that we developed back then are more important now in today's world than ever before. Mm. And I, we're not born with people skills. These are things that we can learn and things that we can figure out as we go along. And that kind of leads into my next question is, if you uh, are starting a law firm and you're interested in getting up to speed on what they don't teach you in law school. So people skills, business mm -hmm. skills, things like this, marketing. Mm -hmm. Where would you start, Mark? I mean, I would suggest everyone go to your blog, go to your website and and, and read your books and stay up to speed on, with your content because I really yeah. do mean that. You're one, you're one of the best on the planet. Thank but having you. said that, um, where should these young lawyers go to up, raise the bar when it comes to marketing, branding, you know, especially digital and online? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not a, a bragging person. I'm not here to like sell stuff tonight, but I would start, I would start with the known book. You know, I mean, the known book is about building your, 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 your personal brand in the, in the digital age. Right. And I spent two years researching and writing this book. And Mitch, I think if I look back at my career, at least right now, I would say this is my number one contribution to the business world because I got it right. I nailed it. This is how you do it. And there's no exceptions. And it works. And it's helped thousands of people. Today, as we talked about, the personal brand is the business brand. If you're known, your firm will be known. So I think today it starts with you, you know, not an advertising agency. And I think it's a very accessible book. You don't have to be a marketer or even a business person to understand it. It's laid out in a simple way. It's, it's fun to read. It's, there's a lot of inspiring stories in there. And so I would say, you know, study a little bit known and, and come to grips with what can you do to build your personal brand. We were flying back from London and I read your book on the trip. I read, that's when I read Known and gave it to my daughter who i knew eventually would be you know going to law school and starting as a lawyer and i wanted her to read it mark because i'm like you need to know this stuff yeah uh, this well, is good we agree then <laughs> we, we you agree so much that you may not remember this but that was the chapter that was the topic of the chapter that you contributed to my book yeah uh Absolutely. and it was about being known on social media so i know yeah. it's it's dear to your heart and i know you're simply walking. Your it talk. is, it, it, and, and again, it's like I feel bad because I don't want to feel like I'm, you know, you know, being self promotional or something. But this is the time to do it. It really is, especially in this pandemic. When we get to the other side of this pandemic, some people aren't going to make it to the other side. Look, let's be real. There's going to be a shakeout, right? And so you got to do every angle. You got to do everything you can right now to give yourself the best chance to, 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 you know, to arrive and working on your personal brand is to me, it's right up there with, you know, you know, watching your cash flow and cutting expenses and, and pivoting in new ways. You know, if you've got the time and the ability, uh, it's an important thing to do. In the last couple of minutes, everyone, uh, one of the things, Mark, we jumped on in my mastermind was, was having having attorneys understand that they're leaders in the community and their clients are looking to them for leadership, because when we have clients, it's because they have problems or something going on, something went sideways, something didn't work out the way they thought it would. And so we're involved. And once everybody got on the same page, Mark, where let's use this and be proactive and use this as an opportunity to be leaders in our industries, right? Both offline and online. What I noticed is I noticed members um, start to, I don't, I don't want to say become more relaxed, but I saw, saw them becoming more focused and getting up each morning with having a, a better intention about what was going to happen that day because they knew they are going to be adding value yeah. to somebody's life. And to me, by building your brand, doing that, while at the same time sharing stories, sharing blog posts, like the blog posts that you've been writing and you've been sharing, to me, 
that's what it's all about because like you said three months from now six months from now 12 months from now that's what people are going to remember One i'll hundred. always remember yeah. you sending me an email saying hey mitch i'd love to contribute a chapter to the book i don't have time i'm super busy. you may not remember this i'm super busy i've got a full schedule you know circle back next time and then like a week later i got an email from you hey mitch i was flying back from a, a speaking engagement see the attached, see if this works for you. You took the time to do something and I'll never forget that. And I think this is a time where when we take that extra step, our clients, our customers, our online audiences, they're going to remember that because we were the ones that were that were here for them when they needed us. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, before we wrap things up, I want you to know, I was uh, checking out your Twitter feed before we went live and you did an unboxing on your Twitter feed, right? <laughs> Yeah, literally moments before we went live. It yeah. literally was like a couple of minutes. I'm I'm multitasking all the time. But here's the takeaway, you guys, is this was an event that is it I think it was called Sapphire that yeah. that you that you would go to. It's in Florida. I'm guessing you probably spoke there or keynoted there mm -hmm. and didn't happen this year, obviously, because of COVID-19. But they took steps to have you think about that event to experience something that was happening in that event. And then you shared that with your audience. Well, it, was, it was just remarkable. Yeah. I mean, this, this is an event. They would get 25,000 people in Orlando. And on May 5th, they decided to make it virtual. And it was this week. And they put the whole thing together, five days of interviews and content and, 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 oh my gosh, you know, it was, it was miraculous really what they did. It was it was it was mind blowing what they did, and the example that that I use is you know in the live event they were going to actually make these water bottles and customize them, and they had all these robots. Well, the event was canceled, so they made a website with robots to make these water bottles that are then mailed to you. Uh, so I mean, the whole event was just was really mind blowing what what it, they were able to do. It was one of the most impressive content pivots I've ever experienced. And this is the time. SAP was the company. Yeah, that, SAP. Okay, SAP. And this is yeah. the time to do that pivot. Instead of just canceling the event, they took things to another level. Mm -hmm. And now they've got us talking about it right now on live video around the world. And that's the power of being proactive. That's the power of looking at difficult times as a time of opportunity and connecting with people like Mark Schaefer. Mark, if anyone would like to reach out to you if they want to connect with you, if they'd like to grab your books, read your blog, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? It's really easy to find me. I'm at businessesgrow.com. Uh, I figured no one would remember how to spell Schaefer. So businesses grow is pretty easy. You can uh, find my blog, my podcast called the marketing companion and my books and all my social media uh, channels. I'd love to stay connected with you. Mark, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Mark Schaefer, everyone. This is Wednesday Night Legal Marketing. My name's Mitch Jackson. Make it a masterpiece, everyone. Good night.